Right, frontal blessings. We are back with another video. A couple quick announcements. Run through it. All right, if you're interested in a spiritual reading or a consultation, I offer various different types of spiritual readings, clopathic demonic readings, uh, Egyptian oracle readings, deity readings to see what God's goddess is and spirits walk with you, uh, Santa Muerte readings, uh, shadow work readings, which is always a great thing to do. Shadow work is continual. Shadow work reading is good to find out what's going on with the shadow, the hidden self, what's going on in the deep access of your subconscious mind, what could be causing you blockages, issues, things you need to work on about yourself. And the shadow work reading is always great to point you in the right direction as far as ritual work. Because people always ask, what should I be doing right now? Shadow work determines what's going on right now and what's of critical importance in your life. And as I've said many times before and will continue to say, Ritual work should always be designed first and foremost for your needs first before your wants. Once you address the needs and master yourself, a lot of the doors to your wants open up. Your desires, your financial goals, uh, etc. All the wants, seems like the door opens up wide for those. Or maybe you're interested in a spiritual consultation, a spiritual consultation. As I said, most people use it as a one-on-one -on -one session with me just to ask a bunch of questions. A lot of people come to those consultations with a list of questions written out and they just want to build on the occult in the left-hand path or some have specific areas of interest they want to focus on. But I want to make it clear, that's what a consultation is. It is not a reading. They're two entirely different things. So if you're interested in any of the aforementioned, shoot me an email at khnum19 at gmail.com. That's kanum19 at gmail.com. Please include in your email your full availability on a weekly basis and the time zone that you are in. It speeds up the process. If you're really interested in booking a reading or a consultation, I could immediately shoot dates and times that work with your schedule and my schedule based on what I have available. All right. If you want to sign up for classes to get in on the Primordial Chaos uh, classes, the way to do that is to go to the official uh, Primordial Chaos Patreon page located at patreon.com forward slash Beniti B-A-N-I-T-I that's patreon.com forward slash Beniti B-A-N-I-T-I dot com tier 3 that's the tier you want to go to tier 3 is going to give you access to the 3 private classes I do every month on Patreon and it's going to give you access to the group ritual we do together at the end of the month all right tier three is the tier you want to join that's going to give you access to all of those classes uh when you join tier three also keep in mind you don't just get access from the day you join moving forward you get access to everything in the archives going four plus years back if you want to see all the different types of classes that i'm offering that are ongoing right now go to the patreon page at patreon.com forward slash beniti and go to the collection section. You will see everything archived in uh, you know numerical order, clear as day. You'll see all the constant ongoing classes. That new content is constantly being added, um, and with new classes being added frequently. Okay, just to name some, we have the uh, Egyptian vampiric class, Sith dark side alchemy and philosophy class. We just had a great class yesterday afternoon, clopathic sorcery class. Uh, Luciferian Magic and Self Mastery, Kundalini Meditation and Awakening class, Esoterical Occult Bible Study class. Uh, we have the Shadow Work classes going on, 20 Deep and Counting. Uh, left Hand Path, Norse Mythology and Runes class. We have the Eastern Left Hand Path, the Coke class, dealing with the Jinn, Shaitan, and working with uh, uh, Aramon and a lot of Left Hand Path, Eastern Mysticism. You name it, I'm covering it and constantly adding new content. So if you're looking to really get on this path and say, I really need to get with something that's gonna take my spirituality on the path to self-master to the next level, I promise you if you check out my Patreon page, you're gonna get that information. Nobody is offering what I'm offering it for and the price that I'm offering it for. Trust me when I tell you, okay? I just wanna make that clear. And. Now, I say that out of confidence, not arrogance. It speaks for itself. Check it out. Patreon.com forward slash Beniti, B-A-N-I-T-I, tier three. Also, check out all the social media pages. Primordial Chaos 9, one word, on Instagram. 
Primordial Chaos, two words on Facebook where I upload all this new content. And check us out on Instagram, primordialchaos3.com. I'm sorry, on TikTok. Primordialchaos3.com on TikTok. So that's the best way to keep up with all the latest happenings, classes, events. Speaking of events, mark your calendars. October 31st to November 3rd, 2024, 7th Annual Journey of the Black Adam Conference right here in Hollywood, Florida. Uh, Four-day event, classes, workshops, rituals, meet and greet. You know how we do it. We do it like this every year. It's be our seventh straight year doing it. Uh, looking forward to seeing some new people. We're going to have some new presenters, uh, both live and via, uh, you know, virtual reality. We, it's a combination of both. Uh, we had a great event last year, great cemetery work in, some great ritual work. We got some good stuff planned this year. We already got some ideas as we get now closer to that event. More information coming on that soon. All right. Um, also, don't forget to check out the Primordial Chaos podcast available on Spotify and all major podcast platforms. The direct link to the podcast, my contact email address to reach out to me for readings or consultations, uh, the link to all the social media pages, and the direct link to the Primordial Chaos Patreon page to sign up for classes. All that's in this description box of this video you're watching right now. All right, you see the title. I've been wanting to do a little something on this, a quick tutorial on this. This is me. Uh, Always wanted to do something in reference to the power of your occult jewelry that you wear, okay? Now, I know you guys over the years, you see me, I wear a bunch of different pieces. I don't wear my Mr. T starter kit. You know, some people get a little eccentric with it. But I own, quote unquote, what you would call a lot of occult jewelry. I have a lot of different, uh, you know, Baphomet pendants, Chaos Stars. Uh, I have... Uh, draconian uh, amulets dealing with symbols of the uh, Ouroboros serpent energy, the dragon. Um, I have the all CNI pieces. I have a lot of Leviathan cross sigils, etc. Skulls, uh, Santa Muerte pieces. The list goes on. You guys know what I'm talking about. Some of you probably pretty much similar or the same. Uh, but I own a lot, quote unquote, of occult jewelries, necklace, occult jewelry, necklace, few bracelets, not really big on bracelets, and I have a lot of rings, right, with the same, with the five-pointed star, Baphomet, pentagrams, Leviathan crosses, skulls, uh, all-seeing eyes, etc. Now, I don't just wear random shit because I just wear it, just because it looks like the cool in thing to do. Uh, all, and I literally mean every aspect, every piece that I wear is charged for a specific reason, purpose, because as I've told some of you guys that have worked with me in readings, consultations, classes, I've always said your occult jewelry is an extension of your ma magical power. It is a vessel and it's an extension that connects to your magical power, right? All your jewelry should be cleansed, charged, and prepared for a specific reason why you're wearing it. You shouldn't just be wearing it. Because when you're wearing occult jewelry that carries symbols and sigils, you are drawing a certain type of energy to you, but it also needs to be charged a certain way to filter out energy that you do not, you know, want to connect with, right? There's also an importance of understanding the metals that you're working with. Now, obviously, always silver and gold, but it should be real silver and gold or stainless steel brass. And I'm going to tell you why I say that. High forms of quality gold, not fake ass gold, a good carrot usually 12, 14, and 18 on up, white gold, if you're working with gold, right, no gold filled, no, 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 no fake shit, right, because the metal is a conductor of filtering out and working with this, the energy, if you're using metals that block that, like fake metals, like a thing that's going to turn fake silver or cheap silver, the reason why I also include solid stainless steel in there because it doesn't tarnish where it'll block certain spiritual vibrational energy. So the only metals I recommend using when you're working with occult jewelry or charging occult jewelry, whether for yourself or maybe you make pieces for somebody else, um, are those three metals. Uh, stainless steel, good quality 925 sterling silver, and a good carat gold white gold, any of that, no no gold fill, no no um, combination of 
cheap metals of gold. Gold will fuck you up the most if it's a very cheap or bad quality. I only have a couple of gold pieces. I don't really work with gold a lot. Um, you also have to find out a conductor that works for you better. I find out that sterling silver, good quality silver, and some quality stainless steel works as a great conductor for me when I'm charging ritual occult jewelry, right? Some of you guys that I've worked with over the years in readings, it's come up, the spirits have even requested you or suggested, because like I say, I don't tell people what they should or should not do. It comes up in your readings and your consultations that it would be a good idea for you to have a talisman or a piece of jewelry. Now, jewelry can be used for a multitude of reasons on the path of the occult left-hand path. It can be a conductor and a facilitator of energy. It can be used as a talisman in the form of protection. Or it can also be simply used, like a lot of my Santa Muerte pieces, and I have several of them, a couple of Santa Muerte rings, they're used as a vessel for a stronger bond and connection. I've charged them, which I don't reveal to anybody. You shouldn't reveal to anybody what purpose you're wearing them. Um, but I charge them in different aspects of a stronger bond and connection with the Holy Death. Uh, a, uh, a connection that I've cultivated, obviously, and, and made strong over the years. I have a nice Samael piece that I recently got not too long ago that you might have seen me wear a few times couple times here and there. I've charged that in connection and relationship to my work with Samael. Um, yes, you can charge pieces like pe people always reach out. Can I create a talisman to, let's keep it real, to attract sex? You're just trying to uh, enhance your, your sexual activity. Is that? Yes, you can. Kali pieces can work for that. And not just that Kali is about sex. Or there could be talismans and certain symbols sigils and pieces that can be charged with that. This is many aspects you can use in connection to occult jewelry and different pieces, right? Some people on the occult and left-hand path, they specialize in that area. That's that's the work that they do, uh, specifically dealing with pieces. Now, me, myself, I've done a few. I haven't done a lot of them over the years. Some of you I've done a couple for. You might be watching this video. I've done a couple of Santa Muerte pieces that I've charged and uh, done for some people. Uh, it's not something I do a lot. It has to be for a reason and a certain situation uh, that might come up in a reading or a consultation that something needs to be done. And uh, some of you have had to do it uh, to enhance your physical health, maybe. Uh, protection in the sense of not to be running around fearing that something can happen to you, but protection maybe from unwanted energy that could be creating blockages uh, and issues in your life. So occult jewelry is is there's multi purposes for wearing it. Uh, yeah, don't get me wrong, but fashion and how it looks probably is at the bottom of that list. Don't get me wrong. I like to like I'm wearing a simple Ankh piece today, right? I, I have several Ankh pieces too. I have set pieces that connect me to my spiritual power of Egyptian Heka, right? So today I'm wearing a very simple Ankh which is, was a symbol I started wearing, which is obviously a very well-known, popular, widely used, and worn symbol. But obviously, even prior to, quote-unquote, being on the occult, the left-hand path, I used to be uh, into the uh, more introductory, lighter philosophies of ancient Egypt back in the day. So it's a symbol that's, you know, I've gravitated to for many reasons going back years. Yeah, as you know, I have a few Egyptian tattoos, the Sa symbol, the Ka, which as you know, ta I'm probably going to do another video on that when you're stamping yourself, your skin with images. I'm not going to talk about that here, but that's another uh, video I'm going to do. Uh, should you get tattoos with with sigils and occult? But I'll save that for the next video because there's stuff I want to talk about on that. I've been wanting to do something on tattoos and jewelry. And especially nowadays, tattoos being very common. Uh, wasn't like that back in the day. Not not everybody and anybody now who has tattoos. But we'll talk about that next video. But I just want to make sure you're in alignment when you're wearing occult jewelry and occult pieces. Do you know why you're wearing it? Are you just wearing it because you like it? It looks good? I, I don't suggest that, especially when you're wearing symbols. Be it something as simple as the Ankh, a set piece, a Leviathan cross... Uh, a Baphomet or Baphomet, however you want to say it, a uh, pentagram, understand what the Hebrew letters are on the pentagram, why you're wearing it. 
I also have another uh, Lucifer Lilith one that you might might have seen me wear over the years on and off. Know why you're wearing it, because it is a magnet that will attract energy, and make sure it's charged properly, because you want to make sure it also filters out, as I said earlier a few minutes ago, unwanted energy. So your occult jewelry should have significance and meaning, especially to you personally. Okay, and it should be treated almost like you're altering your tools. I don't like a lot of people, anybody, touching it, right, because of the energy that you've charged it with, right? Now, you could even use occult jewelry and sex magic. If you're working with your partner, it could be worn, it could be charged uh, with sexual fluids. Uh, you know, I've done that. And with, with a significant other, you know, you're charging that. It can be worn because the sex magic ritual could be connected to what you're working with. Uh, for an example, especially the Infernal Union ritual, uh, a Baphomet pendant, the Lilith Samael. Sometimes two individuals will get together to uh, enhance that bond through the Infernal Union. So it can be used ritualistically. It can be charged also with sexual fluids, body fluids, blood, etc. Because there's life and power in the very fluids that are, are connected to your existence, your creation, especially blood, right? And we work very responsibly with blood on this path because some people hear that and they don't understand what that means. We do it safely, not to the point of where we harm ourselves. Blood packs and working with blood has been used uh, in many systems spiritually going back eons, right? It's, it's, it's a practice that is utilized. That too can be incorporated into working with your occult jewelry. So, again, this is something I've been wanting to just chime in on briefly for a while. Uh, because one thing, again, over the years, I mean, I literally, no exaggeration. Uh, if I look, I have, I think I'm up to three jewelry boxes right now, literally. And counting and some um, on a hanging thing I have. I've collected and amassed so many different pieces over the last, shit, 10 to 15 years. I mean, I have, going back, I have a lot of pieces. A lot of little simple things, more extravagant things. Because again, I've always approached from the very early and beginning stages that my occult jewelry was a magical vessel and an extension of my magical power, right? And not to do it, again, uh, some people can get a little extreme with it. I'm not telling you what to do and not to do. You don't need to, again, some motherfuckers is just out there with it. They got their Mr. T starter kit on, you know, and they just get extreme with it. I'm not suggesting that. I'm not telling you not to. If that's your thing. That's how you want to roll. Power to you. Knock yourself out. Do your thing. But I'm not encouraging anybody to do it on that level in any shape, form, or fashion. Okay? All right. So I just wanted to run, you know, through that as you move forward. Select your occult pieces. Be specific on why you're selecting it. Why do I want to wear that occult piece? What's the significance? What am I going to do with it other than the fact of just wearing it? All right? I don't ever buy a piece just for... And uh, I know a couple of you guys have made... I've had a couple pieces made made for me for particular reasons over the years. Um, and it's for that reason. Uh, specifically, whatever that reason that was chosen. So, just just be wise, right? Because metals are conductors of energy, okay? It works also on the flip side when you see shit. When they're creating these pieces and they want you to wear them, right? We don't know what they've charged these. Just these random shit you buy in stores. People like to wear jewelry. They could think about it. People like to wear uh, entertainers and rappers. They like to wear jewelries and, and pieces and, you know... And, and Christ heads and, and it's like why are you wearing this shit other than the fact it's trendy do you know the energy you're bringing to yourself look at fucking doofy dumb diddy getting tattoos of Azili Dantor on his back look what's happening to him now right he he was the downfall of his own demise you cannot get Azili Dantor tattooed on you I'm gonna talk more about that in a tattoo and then you go abusing women look at the recent video that just came out from 2016, he clearly was beating that girl Cassie, kicking her and punching her. Punk bitch. Any grown ass man that puts his hands and, and physically attacks a woman like a man, 
that dude should go to jail and get his ass beat and raped every day as far as I'm concerned. And hopefully that's coming. Because he fucking deserves it. You don't, you don't get a goddess like Ozili Dantor tattooed on your back and then you're a womanizer. Just goes to show you how fucking dumb and stupid people can be, even though having all that money and being wealthy. Not a wise individual. So somebody should have warned his ass. But I'm glad they didn't because he got what's coming to him now. But anyway, not to keep beating a dead horse, I just wanted to do this short tutorial on the power of your occult jewelry and your magical practice, right? Look at it now from that perspective. When you're wearing pieces, just, just do the knowledge, as they say, right? Why are you wearing it? Other than the fact you just like it, right? There's got to be some significance there. There's got to be a reason, something that's connected to your magical power, to your work, right? Yeah, some of it looks good. Don't get me wrong. It's, oh, that's a nice piece. People go, oh, man, that, that's cool. Where did you get that? Uh, blah, blah, blah. I got it on Amazon. Oh, blah, blah. Got it over here in this store. Oh, I got, blah, I got it this close. That's cool. But you should be wearing it for a greater purpose than just that is my point. That was the point of doing this video because, again, over the years, and not because I'm doing it to, to fuck with people, but I've run into so many people over the years out and about, and I see them wearing pieces, and I ask them, and large percentage of them don't really have a, a concrete answer why, of why they wear it other than the fact that it looks good and they like it, which that, again, in my opinion, should be the last reason why you wear it. It's just my opinion. You don't have to agree with that. But that's my point. So have some purpose, some reasoning behind it, and look at that as a connection and an extension of your magical power. That's it. All right? So hopefully this short tutorial helped you, and hopefully now you look at occult jewelry and jewelry pieces in a more significant and important way. All right? Other than that, if you will need to reach out to me again, for spiritual readings or consultations if you want to sign up for classes uh, again the direct link to the Primordial Chaos podcast uh, the link to all the social media pages the link to uh, you know my email address if you want to reach out to me to, to sign up for a spiritual reading or a consultation and the direct link to the Primordial Chaos Patreon page to sign up for classes all of those links are in the description box of this video that you're watching right now. All that information is there. Other than that, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for your time, infernal blessings, and we will talk soon.